Hey everybody, do you have a new Martin M. Touch? Maybe it looks just like this. If you do, I want to show you today how to get the most out of this, how to use it, what functions you've got, and uh, how you can really get up and running really quickly. Now the first thing that I want to show you is these 10 faders. Now these are called the force touch faders because unlike a traditional fader, you raise them by touching this capacitive touch material. Let me show you. Now, if you just open the software, you'll have to record some cue lists to these faders before you're able to get the LEDs to light up like this. I've already gone ahead and done that for you. However, notice how it still, even though it's not necessarily like a typical fader, it reacts very similarly. You bring your finger to the position on the fader where the LEDs are. Let me show you one on this side and you simply grab it and move it where you want it to be. Just like a traditional fader on a lighting or audio console or any other piece of equipment. Now, below these 10 faders, you notice also the LEDs on the faders are colored dependent on the type of cue list that I've placed on there. Below these 10 faders are 10 bump buttons. Now, what's cool about these buttons, you can see them flash green when you touch them. But what's really cool about these bump buttons is not only are they like a traditional bump button where you press them and they bump your fader to full or whatever else you define them to do in the software, they also are velocity sensitive. So what's that mean? Well, that means the harder you press it, the more your fader's going to jump up and down. And not only does this work for intensity, but it does some really stinking cool stuff when it comes to colors, pan, tilt, really any attribute of light you can think of. You do have to turn that on in the software, but it's in the cue list options window. Over to the right of these 10 are these 10 multi-function buttons. Now, the cool thing about those is they are defined by this four-way selector up here. Right now, you can see it says play. These are 10 playbacks. Now, I don't have anything on them, so they're not going to light up when I press them, but they would if you had programmed something there. The other options we can do are F keys, which is a short press in the center of this button. See that? And the F keys by default are set to the screen views inside of MPC. However, you can set them to a whole host of variety of different functions. You can do that simply by holding the edit key and pressing the F key that you want to edit. You'll get a nice window that pops up. You can see it here. And you're able to simply go in, define from a whole host of different cool functions. And uh, I'll leave that for you to explore on your own. Now, if we do a long press on this four-way selector, we'll switch sides, okay? So up and down is a short press on this, and side to side is a long press, as you saw there. Give it another long press, we're back to F key, and a long press brings us to base. Now, if we go ahead and select a fixture inside of our MPC software, I'm going to select a Mac Viper, you can see these now light up. And this is where we control our attributes. For most fixtures, the first attribute button here is going to be intensity. Here I've got intensity, here I've got shutter. Now, these belts here are actually like encoder wheels and you move them a little differently than the faders. You can put your finger anywhere on the belt and move it up and down to have control over the parameters and most parameters like pan tilt I'll show you here it's going to take more than one swipe of your finger to move the encoder the full way. That gives you a finer control than you would get if it moved all the way from zero to full with one swipe of your finger. So we're glad they designed it that way. You also notice as I modify parameters, this is pan tilt, color, gobo, and uh, beam here. And then this one is the control channel on this particular light. And as I've modified parameters, the light turns red, letting me know I've modified this light in the programmer. Now if I do a short press over to effects, from base, sorry, that was a long press. It does, you know, take, it's, it's a little bit getting used to, but you press over to effects there, and now you get your effects parameters, you get your fanning tool on Martin M series, 
you get your grouping masks and your global rates. Those are easily selectable here. Now, above these, I just want to go over all the buttons on the desk quick, the M-Touch here, so that if you're completely new, you understand how they work. We've got last, next, and highlight, allowing you to use that in your programmer to select fixtures and, and see what you've got selected with the highlight function. We've got record, edit, update, load, and clear. Again, programmer functions. If you're completely new to M-Series, hitting clear once will deselect your fixtures, and twice will um, completely clear your programmer. So if you use other consoles, um, that's how it works in M-Series. Above our faders, we've got 10 buttons by two here, and those are uh, play and back button. Um, again, definable within the software, which is why Martin just gave you the numbers and um, this one as blank so that you can define it to what you want in the software. Over here all the way on the left, we've got a bank selector, plus and minus. Now this is going to select banks of fader just like uh, any console with moving faders. You can see the LEDs change as I switch between banks and the number, though there's a little bit of glare, is displayed on the screen. Below that we've got the beat button, which allows you to tap tempo to the beat for chases you've recorded in the console. The select key, which allows you to select cue lists. And then snap, release, back, and go, which is a main playback section. And so if you're new to the M-Touch, that's how it works. That's the basics of how you use it, you get around it. And so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hey guys, did you like this video? I hope it helps you use your M-Touch better and more effectively. Now, if you did like this, hit subscribe over here to subscribe to LearnStageLighting.com videos so I can give you more great videos about lighting, about consoles, about colors, about all sorts of things with lighting. And while you're there, I've actually got a full tutorial of videos on how to begin with Martin M-Series. So if you're new to the software, go check out those videos as well. Thanks.